You can choose only between love and fear. In love are you resurrected, in fear are you crucified. Hello friends! In this video we'll be talking about Lesson 3 in the Way of Transformation. This is the second book of the trilogy, the Christ Mind Trilogy, or the Way of Mastery. And these books are channeling of Yeshua ben Joseph, or Jesus. And these are by John Mark Hammer, or J.M. And I apologize for the other videos where I mispronounced his name. It's J.M., not Yayam. The Way of Mastery, all these books are phenomenal. I can't recommend them enough. And they're available free online at WOMlibrary.com. And these videos just give you a little taste of each lesson. I highly recommend checking out the full lessons on that website or with the physical book. Lesson three has to do with love and fear. And it begins, like he does many of the other lessons, with acknowledging that we are one with him, that we are all one. I and my father are one. Describing unity. We are all sun rays of the same light, of the same sun. So we are all creator. And then he describes how this experience on earth and this reality is kind of like a temporary insanity because we are experiencing the illusion of separation, of being separate from your creator, from God, from the creative intelligence, from the love, from the love light, whatever you wish to call it. And even though you've experienced this temporary insanity, the creator or God's spirit has never judged you. You are still perfect and one with him, with her. And that you are continuously and perfectly creating experiences to help you remember what you really are experiences that will lead you to remembrance. Rest assured, beloved friend, that that is exactly how it is in the cosmic dimensions of your being. Your father knows that given perfectly free will, you have elected at times to be temporarily insane. Knowing this, no judgment has been passed, and you have never been made wrong by your creator. And you have never failed to create and attract precisely those most beautiful lessons that have triggered for you what you most need to learn, what you most need to feel. And in each moment, you exist in an exquisite perfection of your own making, your own collaboration with one another. You therefore, my beloved friends, are already as I am. And then he goes on to bring up another thing he brings up again and again in all these lessons, which is the way of transformation, the way of mastery. What is required is your commitment, your commitment to remembering what you truly are, your commitment to realizing, to reminding yourself, to right-mindedness, that you are one with the Creator. Beloved friends, the way of transformation does, indeed, require your commitment. And where you feel that your commitment has wavered, when you become aware of it, simply choose anew. And choosing anew, he says, is choosing love. There's always a choice, love or fear. So choosing anew is realizing this experience came from me. I created this, and I can use it to help me remember, or I can damn it and act out of fear. What is your choice? You are the one given the infinite power of the mind of God to see through the eyes of love, to rest in perfect safety, to embrace all that comes to you in the simple reality that you have called it to you, as a challenge perhaps, but always as an opportunity to expand your commitment to love. And where love is chosen so that you want nothing else, beloved friends, you will see nothing else but a lovely world, infinite in dimension, sparkling in clarity, radiant in beauty, and you will look upon it and say, behold, it is very good. And then he shares with us an exercise, an exercise, a practice, sort of a meditation that he said he did when he was on earth and one which he shared with his friends or as we know it, his disciples. He says to close your eyes and begin breathing deeply, become aware of the breath and tell yourself, I allow this breath to move deeply and slowly. And as you get more relaxed and go deeper into this breathing, tell yourself, as Christ in perfect safety, I release all tension. As Christ, in perfect safety, I dissolve my mind into the perfect peace of God. Then merely continue in this manner, as what you call the breath comes to fill the body gently, merely say, I accept. And as the breath leaves the body, gently say within the mind, the love of God. So he says it continue this way, the in-breath, I accept, and the out-breath, the love of God. And do that for five minutes. Then after five minutes, Drop the words, drop the language, and let just the energy be there. Breathe in, I accept, have that energy, the feeling, it could be colors associated with it, or just emotions or images, and the out breath, the love of God. And he says to do this in the morning and at night, right after you wake up and right before you go to bed. And these lessons in these books are meant to be one lesson per month. So this exercise he shares is supposed to be done for 30 days. And after you're finished with the exercise, you are to say to yourself within 
As Christ, I have celebrated in this manner the truth of who I am, and I bring peace to the world this day. Allow this practice period to occur in the morning of your day, and then again in the evening of your day. The only change would be in the final phrasing. Say simply, This day I have brought peace to the world and offered it to my companions. And then he goes on with the lesson, and he shares that this world is not real. This idea always hits me weird. It's like, yeah, it is real. I'm experiencing it. What do you mean by that? But he emphasizes this again and again. The world is not real. Beloved friends, the world that you look upon is not real. It has never been real. It will never be real. But it is a creation that can be impregnated with the perfect love of God. Remember always then that there is only love or fear. And what is not love can be only fear and is never justified. The world that you have made is thoroughly harmless. The world that you experience, which is the world that you have made in conjunction with others, in any given moment offers to you the opportunity to choose to impregnate it with love or to allow it to reflect to you your fearful thoughts. You are not limited at any time, and in you all power under heaven and earth is given. I really like this lesson because it makes it pretty simple. It's like in every moment we have a choice. And it's really simple. You have a choice between two things, love or fear. And then he goes on to say, haven't you suffered enough? Aren't you tired of this? Choose love. Surrender to love. End this suffering and this drama that is really all self-created. So really we just need to get out of our own way by letting go of the illusions that we have created. And he reminds us that we can check in with ourselves to see what we're committed to in any moment just by how the body feels. If we're committed to fear, we'll feel contracted, right? Tense, speak loudly, be reactive. If we're choosing love, we'll forgive. We won't defend ourselves, our point of views. We allow, we surrender. And then he encourages us to see reality around us in every moment as if it's a scene in a movie and that it is only a field of energy that is complete servant to you. It responds completely to you, to your views of it. As you look upon each segment, each scene in your movie, each minute, begin to cultivate the deliberate practice of recognizing that where you are is in a field of energy which is your perfect servant. And within that moment, or that minute, you are the one with the power to make that moment be whatever you wish it to be. It can be filled with Christ consciousness. It can be filled with temporary insanity. The choice is always yours, and never, ever has there been such a thing as a victim. It's very empowering, very empowering. And also pretty difficult at first to wrap our heads around this. It's like, well, what do you mean? Of course, that person did this to me. I was born in these conditions. We're so used to just immediately blaming things outside of us. But again and again, he empowers us and says, no, it is your power to create in each moment what the meaning is in that moment, because everything is actually neutral. And he says, it's as if you have a wand, a magic wand. And you can create the scene, the moment you're in, to be of love or to be of fear. It's totally your choice. And then he talks about forgiveness. And he says, really, all spirituality has to do with forgiveness. Obviously, it's a major theme in Jesus or Yeshua's teachings. Remember that forgiveness has nothing at all to do with saying to another, well, I can see that you have sinned, but I forgive you your faults. No, forgiveness is the recognition that nothing has been done to you that you would prefer to see the face of Christ in the one in front of you. So why does it seem so opposite to these truths that he shares? Why does it seem so difficult? What then is the veil that seems to make it so difficult? It can be only this, that you have accepted into your mind at some level that the world you see is real and that it holds a power to dictate to you whether you will feel peace or disturbance, love or judgment, this is always an illusion. And your question on this Easter day is, would you be willing to surrender your illusions in order to remember the perfect peace of God? At the time when he was giving this lesson, it was Easter. That's why it refers to that. Again, all these lessons are available free online at WOMlibrary.com. Thank you.